EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. Mother Angelica Live. Brought to you from the Eternal Word Television Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. our church. This whole network is built on trust. The essence of evangelization is to tell everybody Jesus loves you. We are all called to be great saints. Don't miss the opportunity. Thank you. I want to, this is family nights, I want you to call Anytime you want to call. But what we're going to talk about tonight is the spirit of Christmas. When I was a kid, I used to hate Christmas and Thanksgiving. You know why? Well, when you're poor and you're not too sure where you're going next or what's going to happen, when you live without the bare necessities of life, uh, holidays are very difficult. Did you know that? Huh? They're very difficult. If you've lost your husband and you used to have such a good time on Christmas, then you, you don't look forward to Christmas. If, if you know your mother and father can't get you what you like, you want that big bike and you want this and you want that, and, and you see all these other kids running around with all kinds of gifts, you don't look forward to Christmas. And all of these things pile up in our lives. And I wondered why. As I look back, I can see I had the wrong idea of Christmas. You know, we all have the wrong idea of Christmas. We just automatically think that Christmas is a fun time, and sometimes it is. Um, and you get kind of angry because some people have wonderful Christmases. And then you, you look at those people and you look at yourself and it's a, it can be, can be a tremendously depressing day. So we have to find out tonight, what is your spirit of Christmas? You see, in my day, if I'd have had the right spirit of Christmas, those things, and that's all they were with things, even food, wouldn't have mattered too much to me. It wouldn't have, have meant so much that it was a depressing day. If I would have thought of whose birthday it was, if I would have known that that little baby, just about this big, was the son of God, and that he was mine, that he came for me, if, if I'd have known that the eternal father sent his son just for me, it would have taken that day, which was more a national holiday to me, it would have taken that day and turned it around. It wouldn't have mattered, really. It would not have mattered whether I had something, whether I had to give, whether we had a tree, uh, whether it was anything. It would have been special in my heart, you see, very special in my heart. And that's, I think that's what we need to talk about tonight. Call us, call me. What is your spirit of Christmas? What, what does Christmas mean to you? Is it his birthday? 
Is it, is it the birthday of someone that you love very much, but most of all, that you knew and know for the first time in your life that he loves you? I mean, it's a wonderful, wonderful time. What did you, how are you going to go into Christmas? Are you suicidal? Do, do you dread? Call me. Tell me. I dread Christmas, and tell me why. Are you looking forward to Christmas? Well, what are you looking forward to? I want a bike. All right, that's a material thing. But what happens if your mother or father can't can buy you a bike? See, the spirit of Christmas is an inner joy. It has nothing to do with all these things around you, nothing at all. It's good. But you know, we got everything turned around, don't you think? If I had a birthday, you would give a gift to me, right? But you don't do that on Christmas. It's his birthday and you give a gift to each other. That's well, kind of odd. I think we ought to go back to St. Nicholas, you know, on, on the 6th of December. But it's okay if, if that expresses your spirit, a giving, a giving spirit. Number one, Christmas spirit means I understand that the Father, the eternal Father, sent Jesus down on this earth. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing happened. And see, if I'd understood he was not, he was not accepted by the people. See, that's how I felt when I was a kid, not accepted, because my parents were divorced. It was not acceptable. Nobody understood, nobody liked it, and yet you were kind of pushed aside a little bit. So I couldn't understand. Had I known, though, the real meaning of Christmas, I would have understood, and it wouldn't have mattered. Nothing would have mattered except he came. He was sent by the Father. You know, Our Lady had that. Uh, on the 18th of December, we used to have, we don't have anymore, but we used to have in the good old church, um, I had to get that in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I really try to be good, but I can't help it. Uh, in the old church, the good old days, they had a feast called the Expectation of Mary, and it was on the 18th of December. And can you imagine the expectation of Our Lady? Unbelievable expectation. And this was the Son of God, and she knew it. She knew it. There was no surprise to her. You can imagine our dear lady getting prepared and Joseph making a crib and all the things that you, you're doing, you're doing right now. The things you're doing now to, to prepare for Christmas. And, and the awesome thing about that is it never came to be. They had to leave Nazareth and go to Bethlehem. I don't think that was a surprise to her, though. She was very versed in Scripture. But all the things she prepared for had to be left home. And all she could take is herself, Joseph, and a donkey. They, they intended to go and come right back. Can you imagine the spirit of Our Lady and her absolute obedience to what? To that birth. It didn't even matter to her that she couldn't have all the things she had prepared for. Let's say, for example, we've got everything prepared And somebody we love dies, and we have to leave and go to another state. It's, it's like something you prepared, you just kind of 
squashed together. Everything is over. There's there's no more exuberance and, and no more expectation. And you were going to have turkey and you were going to do this and that. And it seems to all die. What what would be our expectation then? What would be our spirit of Christmas at that point? How would I, how would I react if everything I prepared for for Christmas was suddenly washed away? Hmm? And, and you go to a city totally foreign to you. And when you get there, it's crowded. People everywhere, people, donkeys, everything, everywhere, everywhere. No, just edging your way. You go from in to in, in to in, and there's no room, no room, no room. You see what happened to Our Lady? The expectation that she had on the 18th and that we celebrate, used to, was the expectation of the birth, not all the fringe benefits around it. And knowing that she was going to go, that her time was near, and she didn't know where to go, knowing all of that, she never lost her, the wonder of her expectation. She never lost it. Because her mind was totally around Jesus totally wrapped around Jesus. That was, the birth of Jesus was the most important thing. The fact that she was disappointed, they couldn't bring a cradle, they couldn't bring all the clothes, they, they couldn't do anything. She had a minimum. In fact, it, nobody wanted them. You know, you, you, you can't even think of that. We hear, we hear this at Mass, and we just kind of slide over it. But just think now, all of you women out there, think what that would mean to you. And, and that expectation of Our Lady, so ground up in the will of the Father, because she said, be it done to me according to thy will. Well, now she said the same thing. Be it done to me according to thy will. See, her, her spirit was alive in the will of God. So all the things around that just fell away and were a disappointment did not spoil her expectation. Not for a moment. When the infant was born, he came into the arms of a mother unlike any other mother. Pure, holy, filled with love, untouched by the disappointment, untouched by the poverty, untouched by the rudeness of all the people around her. And you see, that's what used to make my Christmas so miserable in the past when I was a kid. No tree, no gifts, nothing. You see, that was, that was so false, so false. I, I missed the whole message. And how many of you are missing the message? How many of you have missed the whole message? And, and that's what you need to ask yourself. You need to ask yourself, what is my spirit for Christmas? If everything I prepared suddenly disappeared, What, what would I have? Would I have that expectation of Our Lady? Would I have that love that I couldn't wait for him to be born? And you have to remember, to God, all things are present. There's no past or future. So on Christmas Eve, when that child is born, it is born again, not again and again, but the Father sees that birth. I can see it too. I can be there. In my heart, in my mind, in my love, I can be there. You see, that kind of Christmas, nothing can take away. Whether you get the same old tie you've got for 20 years, and your husband buys you something that doesn't fit, or somebody opened a package you bought, you thought it was so wonderful, and they thought, what are we going to do with that? <laughs> 
I wanted a bike, I got roller skates. What am I going to do with roller skates? And this happened. By that time, I take the roller skates and wrap them around their neck. You know? <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute, what are you talking? But see, that's because all these things matter. We, we watch people open up the packages that we bought. And we, we wait for that look. And that, that's what you do. Huh? You look for that look. You know, you say, I wonder if she likes this. I wonder if he likes that. And if it's just open it up like this and look at it, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> See, and you're all just, oh, you're broken hearted. And it happens every family, it happens every time. And you walked and walked and walked and you got this for her Aunt Mary and Aunt Mary looking at it and say, oh. And what is it? Your spirit of Christmas is absolutely, totally gone. You go to Midnight Mass if you go. And you're all disgruntled. Why? Because your Uncle Harry didn't like his orange tie. <laughs> Oh, who cares? <laughs> He's not going to wear it anyway. <laughs> You've never seen him wear a tie you bought for him. Right. Why you buy another one? I would never buy a tie for a man. One time I tried, and I, was, I went nuts. First of all, the clerk didn't know what I was doing, a nun buying a tie. <laughs> So after I explained all of that, it was for a friend, you know? I don't use them, I don't want them, I'm buying it for a friend. <laughs> but she kept looking at me like, oh, oh. there's something wrong here. <laughs> I looked at 20,000 ties all over the place. And she showed me one after the other, and she tried to make one out of her fingers. You know how they do it like this, and fold it down like that? And I was more confused then than I was before. <laughs> so what did I do? I said, thank you. I think I'll get something else. By that time, she wanted to take every tie she showed me and wrap it around my neck. <laughs> And, and we go through these, these kind of things every Christmas, every Christmas. We never learn. We never learn. I told you about those little pinwheels I gave away. After Christmas, I got them all back plus three more. <laughs> And, and the happens, you know, and all those things, unfortunately, have the power to spoil, to destroy sometimes the whole spirit of Christmas. So I want you to think of that. Now we have a call. Hello? Yes, Mother. Where are you from? Alabama. And what is your question? Well, my question is, Mother, that I remember having the spirit of Christmas when I was seven. And seven? That was like 40 years ago. Uh-huh. And it was right, and it was the truth, and I was looking for Jesus to be yeah. born. Yeah. And then over all the years, it was like I kept getting further away from that and further away from that and getting caught up into gifts and buying and doing and being yeah. for my family and trying to be everything to everybody. And you can't do that. Well, it didn't work anyway. And... A couple of years ago, I really did understand again, like when I was seven, the real meaning of Christmas yeah. and Jesus and his birth, and it's his birthday, and it's his giving. Right. And now I'm just real confused as to why I still have all these guilt feelings about I have to be here, there, have to do this for yeah. my parents. I have to do this for my children. And I'm well, caught up again. Yeah, well, I think you can do both. See, we have a custom in our country, and many countries have customs. Many countries have the gift giving and a different day. Some on, on the 6th of December, some on the 6th of, of, of January when we have uh, the, the three, three magi. However, 
since we're here in America, and this is the custom in America, I think you can do both. But the motivation for the gift is, must be so different. The motivation for buying that blessed tie and, and, and your kids a bike and whatever you're going to buy has to be a gift for Jesus. What you do to the least, you do to me. I think you can combine. It doesn't have to be like a runaway horse. <coughs> I think in your heart, in your heart, there has to be that expectation of, of Our Lady. He's coming. He's coming. And when you, when you get your dinner prepared and you've invited all the children and or your mother-in-law and all the place you have, that, that shouldn't occupy the heart. Yeah, it may occupy the mind, but not the heart. There always have to be when you wake up in the morning, He's coming. There's so many days now before he comes. If, if that's there and you keep it there, don't let anything, there's no reason for gifts or anything else to, to, to spoil that. And, and sometimes you can't find the right gift. Ugh. But see, that shouldn't spoil it either. Be simple. Say, look, sweetheart, Uncle John, I couldn't find you the right gift. There's $25. Buy your own. We, we don't have to be enslaved by, by what's necessary, what's in our culture. We don't have to be enslaved. We don't have to be so preoccupied that we forget whose birthday it is. If you're going to buy your child a little toy, just say, baby Jesus, I'm buying you this toy for my child. He was a baby. And I often wonder, did he have a toy? <clears throat> did he have something to play with? Say, well, he was God. I know he's God. But he was also a baby, an adolescent, a teenager. He was all the things... And he's yours. He's all yours, and he's all mine. And I need to, what I give for you, what I buy for you, I must do it for him. I think if you, if you put that part of, of your enthusiasm into your gift, I think it will, the, 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 the spirit of Christmas will be stronger inside of you. See, as, as you choose, you make choices. We make all kinds of choices. Then we need to make the choice pleasing to Jesus. When you go to buy that tie, say, Lord, which tie do you want so that I can express my love for you and my joy in your coming through my husband, my brother, my brother-in-law, my wife, whatever it is. Put Jesus into your buying. Put Jesus into that tree you're decorating. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago? I think it was, anyway. I said, why don't you put a light in your window? All you it men uh, can, can go, <laughs> can, can, can make something where you can put a light in your window. It, it's a beautiful custom. To say, in this house, in the darkness of this world, and there's a light in my house. My lamp is lit. I'm ready for your coming. I, I think if you do those kind of things and you spiritualize even buying your turkey, I think that spirit, they will never leave you. We have another call. Hello? Hello? Where are you from? I'm from New Jersey. And what is your question? Well, I just wanted to tell you, many, many years ago, I had seven children, and they were smaller then, and uh, they're all grown now. Anyway, my husband had lost his job, and we had no money for Christmas. And so I had always taught my children to say happy birthday 
Jesus. Ah. Uh. So on the way to work, I was working at that time for a dollar an hour. I was taking home twenty dollars a week. <laughs> <laughs> I know those days. <laughs> And uh, so I would be mine, the Blessed Mother, on the way to work, how I taught my children to say, Happy Birthday, Jesus. And anyway, I came across a newspaper who had pictures of baby, and in ten words or less, you were to, 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 say, to say what you thought the baby was saying and send it into the paper, Great. which I did. And I won first prize. <laughs> That's great. Ten days before Christmas, I had said a prayer to the Blessed Mother. I said, please, Mary, give me ten words. And she did. And then on top of that, a priest came to my house and handed me $50 from an anonymous donor. And so I had $300, and you know, in those days, that was a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> and that was the most beautiful Christmas we ever had because people dropped in with candy and fruit and things like that. And actually, Mother, I could actually feel the presence of Jesus in that house right. that night. So okay. before we went to bed, I had us all kneel around the Christmas tree, and we said a rosary to the Blessed Mother <laughs> and thanksgiving. Great. That's wonderful. You see, that's 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 someone who didn't have anything, who who worked for what was it a dollar an hour? I remember a dollar an hour was. I said, Oh wow, a dollar an hour. Ooh, that was a lot of money. I thought, that, I thought that man was rich who made a dollar an hour, but see, that dollar an hour then was nothing, absolutely nothing. It just didn't have any money, didn't have it. And, and God provided that woman with what she needed because the spirit of Christmas was in her heart. And even though she had nothing, even though she couldn't, she, she couldn't provide as much as she wanted. She kept the spirit of Christmas, see? And that's what I would like so many of you to do. So that when Christmas comes, you, you're not unhappy. We have another call. Hello? Hi. Hi. Where are you from? Miss Jerry. Oh, how old are you? Miss Jerry. How, how old are you? Juicy. I can see it right Huh? Huh? How old are you? Five. That's wonderful. What is your question? Um, Jesus was it in our heart. It wasn't really Christmas. And, um, uh, I like Christmas ever seen because I like Jesus' birthday. Ah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> well, I hope you realize, all of you, that was a five-year-old who says to you and to me and to all of us, if Jesus is in your heart, it isn't Christmas. Well, it's pretty good for five years old, huh? Isn't that wonderful? It is, it's, if Jesus isn't in your heart, it isn't Christmas. And, and that's the most important message. I think if I just shut up right now, that would, <laughs> that would be about the best thing I've ever heard. And thank you, sweetheart. Thank you very much. We have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother Angelica. Hey, where are you from? Um, I'm calling from Chicago, Illinois. My okay. name is Suzanne Lacoste, and um, I've been writing to you every month for a couple of years now, and you write back very nicely to me, and I appreciate that, and I thank you. Um, I want you to know that this Advent season is, is very, very special for my husband and I. We um, are looking forward to coming into the Catholic Church. We're in the RCIA program in our church. So for us this year, um, Advent is looking forward to coming into the Catholic Church and receiving our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. And oh, how wonderful. That's the thing that I look forward to the very most. And I just want to say God bless you, and I wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thank and I love you. you. That's a wonderful thing. Some of you that are going to be joining the church and get your first communion on, on Christmas morning. What a gift that is. You really know what it means to have a merry and a holy Christmas. We have a call. Hello? 
Yes, hello, Mother. Hello, where are you from? Um, I'm Mary Ann. I'm calling from Peoria Diocese. And what is your question? Yes, Jesus is already in my heart and soul, and I would just like to know why should we get so excited about Christmas when Christ is already here? I'm just looking forward to his second coming. Well, I look forward to his second coming, but in the Catholic Church we have a liturgy. And we, as preachers of God, as, as servants of the Lord, as, as his brothers and sisters, uh, must bring forth in us, according to season, his entire life. Why? Because he came, he needs to be thanked. He needs to be loved. The Father needs to be thanked in my heart. He needs to hear me say that I am so happy he's coming, that he's here. And all time is present to God. Maybe billions and billions of people in the past said thank you to him, but I need to say it. I am the one he created. I am the one who lives alone with God, and God treats me as if no one else existed. And remember that one attribute of, of the Lord, everything is now. There's no past, no future. Everything is now. And so... As a religious, as one who has been called by God to be spouse of Jesus, I need to recall, and that's what the church does, recall his birth, recall his baptism, recall his circumcision, recall his, his passion, recall his life, his mission. I must recall that so that I can live that life. I must live the life of Jesus. I must live the birth of the I need to be reborn. There's something in me not like the Father, not like Jesus, not like the Spirit. I must be reborn. But I must I must look at that birth of Jesus, that wondrous, awesome gift from God the Father. I must look at it and give him praise and honor and glory because he did it. And he did it for me. I can never take any part of the life of Jesus and push it aside as if it weren't important. And it happens a lot. That's where I wear this cross. I can't forget what he did for me. It's present to the Father. That's what every Mass is. It's not another sacrifice. It's the same sacrifice. It is visible, always present to the Father. I am present there. And, and so it is with the birth of Christ. She's with the birth of Jesus. I am need to be present. I need to thank the Father for this wondrous gift. And that's why we go through Lent. And that's why we, we cry at Gone Good Friday because he died for my sin. I need, to, I need to express my sorrow, my love, my joy when he rises so that every part of Jesus' life is a part of me. And although it's good, it's good for you to look for the second coming, I look for it too. Every time I hear the news, I look for him to come. <laughs> and I wish he'd come now. <laughs> but you can never push aside his entire life. It's not gone. It's always present to the Father, and it affects me in my time in this age where I am. So from his birth to his life as a, as a minister of God, of the Father, of constantly proclaiming the Father, to his death and resurrection and the coming of the Holy Spirit, I must live that life in my daily life. Otherwise, I miss the boat. We have another call. Hello? Good evening, Mother. Where are you from? I'm from Michigan. My name's Pat. And you were talking about having Jesus in your heart. Uh -huh. And my husband, nearly 30 years, has set a barricade between 
loving Jesus. And especially, it always comes up around Christmas where you see it the most. And one day we were talking, and it came out that over 30 years ago, 40 years ago, he didn't receive a certain gift that he had prayed for and prayed for and prayed for at Christmas. And to this day, in his own words, he holds that against God. Yeah. And it was a, I didn't, I asked what it was. He said it was a BB gun. He even told me the name and everything. I mean, it's like he was reliving the childhood. And I said, well, maybe God didn't want you to have it because you could have hurt somebody or could have hurt yourself. But uh, it's still there. Is, and, you, is he with you now? Yeah, he's sleeping. If he knew I were talking right now. <laughs> Let's ask the angels to whisper what I'm going to say in his ear. <laughs> you see, what's wrong is that he hasn't let go of the past, but that's not the only thing. He has forgotten how good God has been to him all these years. If, you're, if your father or mother wouldn't let a child play with a knife, but fed him and clothed him and educated him. At some point, he would see that was a good thing. You need to pray for your husband. You see, the spirit of Christmas is gone. Why? Because he wanted something from Jesus. And he's, he's, he never got the message that he had to give something to Jesus. It wasn't your husband's birthday. And God didn't answer his prayer. He said no. The a no is just as much an answer because it wasn't for his good. And, and that's, that's the way it is with a lot of you out there. You have a grudge against God. And you know it's a lot of pride. I mean, who do you think you are that you're going to get mad at the most I God because you didn't get a BB gun? Hey, who are you? You know, you're about that far, that much, a little ant. That's what you are. And you're yelling up at God because you didn't get a baby cut. And some of you are, are angry with God over worse, tiny, tiny things. And, and see, we, we take these little things and they get to such huge proportions. Your husband did get that BB bomb, but you, does he know what Jesus did for him, huh? Does he know that? That's what you need to tell him, huh? Let's say a prayer for that poor sleeping man. <laughs> Here I'm yelling at him, and he doesn't even know it. That's, I mean, that's the bad thing about it, you know. You don't mind yelling at somebody if they're hearing you, but he's sound asleep. Lord, I ask that you just wake up this man in his heart this Christmas. Somehow plant into his sleeping mind right now a healing that he can be sorry and say, Lord, I was foolish. You came and I knew it not. I expected something from you instead of me giving something to you. So I like you to take your hand, Lord, and place it on his head and give him peace and bring him home. Amen. We have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother. Where are you from? Illinois, Riverside. And what is your question, sweetheart? Um, I would like to know what Mary and Joseph did with the gold that they got from the three kings. <laughs> I and, wondered that myself a few times. You know? <laughs> um, and, uh, well, M Mother Angelica. Yeah. Will you please pray for my dad? Uh huh. Um, he left. He left us because he wasn't unhappy. He was unhappy. Where Where is he, sweetheart? Well, um, he lives in an apartment. Oh, uh, is he in the hospital? Um, excuse me. What did I miss something? No. Oh, uh, is he? Are you? Is your family divorced, honey? No, they're not. No? Okay. They just live apart from each other. Well, they live apart. <clears throat> we'll pray for, what's his first name? Butch. Okay, Butch. We'll pray for Butch, especially now at Christmas time. And we'll pray for your mother. 
And even though they're separated, you know, it's very difficult. I know all about that. Very difficult at Christmas. If your parents are separated, it just kind of spoils it because there's something missing, see? But you can't let that happen. You can't let it happen, and I know you won't. And we'll pray for your dad. Now, tradition has it that our dear lady in St. Joseph gave away the gold, the myrrh, and the frankincense to the poor. It was valuable, and they gave it away. If you remember, they had to run into Egypt because Herod was after the child and wanted to kill him. Today, we have a similar thing, and we call it abortion. It's a different kind of king, a different kind of Herod that runs searching, searching little children to do away with them. Herod did away with them out of ambition. He was afraid that this person would take his place. But the same thing is happening today everywhere in a different way, but the same idea. This child is going to spoil something in my life. This child is going to take away um, my comfort. This child is going to be an expense. This child is, is going to take away my career. And as a result, we, they, we do the same thing today. We get rid of, like Herod got rid of all these children up to two years old. We don't even allow them to be born because they're in the way. And that's the same thing that happened now and happened then. And so Our Lady and St. Joseph would have never kept all that. They wouldn't have had a place for it. And they would not have kept it because Our Lady knew that this was a gift because he was a king and son of God. They wouldn't have been using it for the next 20 years. They gave it as they would have given everything else they had. They knew that this child born in a stable wanted to be poor. We have another call. Hello? Hello? Hello. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Devon, Pennsylvania. And what is your question? Uh, my question is, I find it difficult to en enjoy Christmas coming because my husband uh, is possibly going to have an operation for cancer. Oh. And how do you be happy when you have this to uh, not look forward to but to anticipate? Yeah. And I don't know how to quite deal with it. Well, there's no question it's hard. But you see, you have something that maybe a lot of people don't have. Uh, sometimes we match love for love. Sometimes we match joy for joy. And now you and your heaven, your husband, have, have the opportunity of matching pain for pain. You see, when the infant was born, it was so cold. So cold. And that infant was born in a cave, which meant the entire opening. The wind would just pass it. It would be so cold in that cave. The rock was cold. So Mary suffered. Joseph suffered by the fact that he could provide no better than it was. And Jesus was born in the cold. How did they handle that Christmas? How did Mary handle it? Well, she took the pain and wrapped her son in her arms. She made him warm. But she was still cold. And that's what you have to do with your husband. Match pain for pain. That's how you're going to celebrate Christmas, with anticipation, because he's coming. The one who heals is coming. 
the one who saves is coming. The one who loves you is coming. The one who loves your husband knows what's happening to him and loves him. That one is coming. For that reason, you should be joyful. <clears throat> Not with an exuberant joy, perhaps, but knowing that you have something you and your husband to give the Christ child that not, perhaps not too many people have. You're also cold because you're afraid. You're lonely, as he was lonely, because nobody wanted him. And now all the, the turkey and all the trees and all suddenly have become very barren and unimportant. Well now, you have an opportunity of living the same spirit that Mary and Joseph and Jesus had. A spirit of sacrifice, a spirit of love, a spirit of compassion. And you can still say from the bottom of your heart, because you want that operation to heal your husband. Infant Jesus, give us a spirit of love and sacrifice and heal my husband. The infant is very powerful. My mother had great devotion to the infant of Jesus, the infant Jesus, especially the one of Prague. So pray to him and ask him to heal him. We have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother. And where are you from? Pennsylvania. And what is your question? Well, I have two comments. First, I'd like to thank you for being the light of Christ to us in thank this you, day Jesus. and age. And second, I'd like to talk to you about my detachment from the program, programming of the world um, in believing that Christmas is a time of family, um, that you can't spend Christmas unless you're with your family. And that's something that I've dealt with all my life. And I'm expecting to be with family members around the table, talk about, oh, how successful their jobs are, how much money they make, what are you doing? And this is how Christmas is supposed to be spent. And it wasn't until I, re I got a spiritual director who freed me from this bondage of thinking that Christmas is after Mass, you have to go with family and listen to the world being talked about around the table when Christmas should be a time of talking about Jesus and having that joy and love in your heart. And it, I, it, until then, I feel, I feel so free now yeah. that I can experience Christ now. <laughs> And I don't feel obligated to be with these people. And now I go where I feel Jesus is calling me. Well, you know, some people don't have family at all. And that's what made Christmas and the holidays so painful to a lot of people. There are single parent families. There are single people who really don't have a place, a family to go. There is a certain account, uh, uh, amount of detachment that's good inasmuch as if that is your state in life, if that's where you are at this moment, there still is no reason why you cannot be alive with that wonderful day we call the birth of Christ. So detachment on that level is very good, but we still need our family. You have to, whether they speak of the world or not, you still need to give them some Christmas cheer. I, Go at least to visit. You don't have to stay. But go at least to visit and say, hey, this is the birthday of Christ. Maybe nobody ever told him it was his birthday. I just learned re recently, a few days ago, that many of our Protestant brothers don't have any services on Christmas Day. Well, that would be sad for me if we didn't have that opportunity to say, hi, Jesus, happy birthday, and I love you. And so what I think you need to do, I'm glad that you relieved of the burden of, of living through a very worldly Christmas. But maybe you need to just go for a visit and say, hey, it's, it's, 
Jesus' birthday. Why don't we say happy birthday, Jesus? And maybe they'll, they'll look at you and say, where'd you come from? But you planted a seed. And sometimes that's all we need is a seed. So don't just, you know, write them off. At the same time, know that if you can really spend the day. When my mother was alone after I left for the monastery, she spent the whole day in church. She'd eat her dinner and she'd go to church and stay there. Well, I hope now you will have a better Christmas. And don't forget to sing him happy birthday. A cake may be in order too. I'll see you tomorrow. To order this episode of Mother Angelica Live Classics from the EWTN Religious Catalog web store, log on to EWTNRC.com 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, or call 1-800-854-6316. Hello family. As we are now in the last few days of 2021, I want to ask that you make a year-end gift so that we can continue and expand our mission in the new year. The world needs EWTN now more than ever. With our devotional programs, documentaries, live shows, and news from a Catholic perspective, EWTN teaches the nations about the eternal word, Jesus Christ. And we are able to share this message thanks to your support. This year, with your help, we've created more programs and increased our online presence. We launched the popular weekly news show, EWTN News In-Depth, as well as programs such as Living Divine Mercy and Explore with the Miracle Hunter. As we start 2022, we hope to reach 400 million television homes worldwide. We also want to create even more programs that will teach people everywhere about the beauty, truth, and goodness of our Catholic faith. I hope that you'll help us with a gift before December 31st. With your donation, we can reach even more people in this coming year with the truth of the eternal word. Thank you, and may God bless you. EWTN is 100% viewer supported. Please make a gift today by going to EWTN.com slash year end. You may also call us at 1-800-447-EWTN or send your donation to EWTN, 5817 Old Leeds Road, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. O glorious Saint Joseph, foster father and protector of the Virgin Mary, to you I raise my heart to implore your intercession. Obtain for me the necessary graces for my spiritual and temporal welfare. Please, Saint Joseph, may I have the grace of a happy death and the special favor I am now presenting to you. I am confident that through your powerful intercession my petitions will be granted. 
I promise to live a good Christian life and love you and your beloved Jesus and Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Joseph, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who in your ineffable providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant we beseech you that we may have him as our intercessor in heaven, whom we venerate on earth as our protector. We live and reign, world without end. Amen. Deciding to adopt can be an exciting time, but also quite challenging. In his new book, Adoption, Should You, Could You, and Then What? Dr. Ray Garendi, host of EWTN's Living Right with Dr. Ray, provides families straight answers to the most common adoption questions. The father of 10 adopted children, Dr. Ray uses his trademark humor and unique perspective to dispel many misconceptions and myths about adoption with the hope of encouraging more people to consider this life-giving choice. In addition, it's filled with God-given guidance for parents who do adopt to help them be successful. Who knows where this book might take you? Adoption, Should You, Could You, and Then What? by Dr. Ray Garendi. The latest release from EWTN Publishing. Now available at EWTNRC.com or call 1-800-854-6316. The story of the Catholic Church in Wales is not well known, yet it is one worth discovering as it is filled with conflict, sacrifice, and miracles. Join EWTN as we embark on a voyage through history and experience the rich church heritage of Wales, beginning with the early church, through the challenges of the Reformation, until today. In Episode 2, explore the thousand-year span when education and economics, along with art and culture in Wales, centered on the church. There was Margam Abbey, Neath Abbey, Quitland Abbey, Valle Crucis, Strata Florida. Wales could really be said to be a bastion of Cistercian monasticism. That's part two of Wales, the golden thread of faith, here on the Global Catholic Network, EWTN. Hi, I'm Janet Williams. Though we celebrate it every year, it may be that the true meaning of Christmas and its history is a bit of a mystery. Yesterday, our guest, Michael Patrick Barber, began to give us a greater perspective on this most wonderful time of the year. He's back with us to continue our discussion. That's Women of Grace, today at 1 p.m. Eastern, here on EWTN. Connected to the Church of the Nativity is the Roman Catholic Church of St. Catherine, named for St. Catherine of Alexandria, a 4th century martyr. A statue of Mary overlooks this beautiful courtyard, which is also guarded by a statue of St. Jerome, who, it is believed, lived here for 30 years in the late 4th and early 5th centuries while he translated the Hebrew and Greek manuscripts to create the Latin Vulgate Bible. Built in 1882 on the ruins of a 12th century crusader church and a 5th century monastery, this church serves as the parish church for Bethlehem's Catholics. A narrow stairway along the right-hand side leads to a series of chapels and caves, including the Cave of St. Jerome, where he worked on his famous translations and where he was eventually buried before the Crusaders took his remains to Rome. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from Christ's side, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. 
Within thy wounds hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy defend me. In the hour of my death call me, and bid me come to thee, that I may praise thee with thy saints and with thy angels forever and ever. 